Hey everyone, I am Scarlessia. I was going to do a gameplay video of me playing a horror game called Collect, but I decided that I should probably make a video about the background story that happened in 1959 first. For those who don't know the true story of what this game is based on, it is a very sad and very mysterious event. A true tragic and chilling story that involves 10 student hikers, 9 of them dead, and no clues as to what happened to them. I will leave links in my description of where I obtained my resources if you want to read or observe everything yourself, as I will not be covering everything that these links provide, but only information important to this video. And remember to like and subscribe if you like this video or any of my other videos. Thank you, and let's get started. This story begins on January 23, 1959 in Russia, where a 23-year-old hiker, who was a Soviet college student, named Igor Dyatlov, started his journey to become the first person to reach the very peak of a mountain in the northern Ural Mountains called Atorten. He brought along nine other experienced hikers who were from the Ural Polytechnical Institute or UPI as we call it. And the name of these hikers were Simon Zolotayov, Nikolai Tibos Brignole, Rustem Slobaidin, Yuri Grivanishenka, Zinaida Komagorova, Alexander Kulivatov, Yuri Drashenka, Yuri Yudin, and Yudmila Dubinina. Before they set out on their adventure, Tiatlov had informed his sports club that him and his team would make sure to send a telegram when they returned. However, they were never heard from or seen again. Let us first step back to introducing you to the hikers a bit. Kurevanishenka was almost always going on expeditions with Tiatlov. He also was very close friends with most people in the Dyatlov group. He graduated from the UPA University and had studied hydraulics and construction. He worked at Chelyabinsk 40, which is a secret nuclear facility, where he experienced the disaster that was known as the Kushtim Disaster, and he was one of the people who was sent to clean it up on September 29, 1957. His clothes had traces of radioactivity, but because of his experience, he had plenty of knowledge about radioactivity and knew how to avoid exposure to it. In the Dyatlov group, he was a joker, and also a musician as he played the mandolin, which he had brought on the fated Dyatlov expedition. When Kulivatov was a child in 1941, his family moved from Svidlovsk to Gulag. He had a rough childhood as he was not a healthy child, and soon his father was later killed by a train. His body was found on the railway lines, but no investigation was ever done. The Gulag at that time was the first camps for Germans, and one of the worst ones to live in. But him and his older sisters, and mother managed to survive. As he got older and the war finally over, his family managed to go back to his hometown, where he started going to school. He became a fourth year physics major at the UPI University and studied nuclear physics. Kulivata then had joined Dyatlov's group in 1959. Two days before the Dyatlov's pass incident, the group celebrated a late birthday for him on January 30th as that was the day he celebrated his birthday. And for his present, 
He was given a tangerine, which he had shared with them. Growing up to becoming a fourth-year student at the UPI University, as an engineering and economics major, Dubinina took part in activities in the Institute Sports Club and enjoyed singing and was an amazing photographer. On a hike in the eastern Cyan Mountains in 1957, she was shot in the leg on accident by a hunter who was accompanying the students. She was in a lot of pain but managed to go through with the trip. However, in February 1958, she had a really hard time hiking in the northern Uros. She always kept her notes and diary with her, which she even wrote in it during the Dyatlov expedition. Some theories say she had a premonition about a horrible event that would happen to them, as she was having strange mood swings and would write in her diary strange expressions of words that she seemed to understand but wasn't clear. She then suddenly stopped writing on January 28, 1959. She was the youngest in the group. Doroshchenka came from a very poor family, but was able to become a fourth-year student of radio engineering in the UPI. His personality was impulsive, and he sometimes wore glasses. But he was famous in the school's hiking club for taking on a brown bear, using only a geologist's hammer. After seeing him pursue the bear, Zinaida Komogorova fell in love with him and for a long time they talked while they were on their hiking trip in the eastern Cyan. They became very close. Once they went back to Sviridlovsk, they decided to date. Soon after, Doroshenka met with Komogorova's parents. Their relationship lasted a while. However, soon later, their relationship started to deplete, and Doroshenka decided it was over when the Dyatlov expedition started. Things were awkward at first for them, since they were going on the expedition together. However, they both loved each other in their hearts still, so it did not make things too bad. Eventually, he settled a good relationship with her and also Dyatlov on the trip. Doroshenka was the tallest person in the group. Slobodin's parents were both university professors that worked in Asia when he was born, and they decided to give him an Asian name. Years later, Slobodin would graduate from the UPI University in 1958 and work in Enterprise P.O. Box 10. He enjoyed being active, as he was very athletic. Slobodin and his father sometimes traveled to Endijon, where his older brother worked. However, the trip there was a mountainous hike, and very risky, for there were natives that lived around the areas that were not friendly, as the Russian lifestyle was envied, and so it was dangerous to travel through the mountains, but Slobodin and his father always usually made it just fine. They were never scared, and were always ready to stand up for themselves. For the Dyatlov expedition, Slobodin was dependable for his courage and adventurous skills, as well as self-defense. Born into a family of paramedics, Zolotayev's generation was very much affected by the Great Patriotic War and World War II. Growing up, he entered the war in the armed forces from October 1941 to May 1946 and managed to get through it all. In 1944, he became a candidate member of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union and four military awards were given to him. Even after the war, Zolotayev wanted to continue his military career, so in June of 1945, he entered the Moscow Military Engineering School, which unfortunately almost went under a reduction. And so it happened in April of 1946, he was transferred to another military school called Leningrad, but then it was soon cut down also. He then graduated from the Institute of Physical Education in 1951 and became a sports instructor and then moved 
to the Skridlovsk region. Before Zorotayev joined Zyatlov's group, he was already enlisted in a different group led by a man named Zagrin. The trek would last 25 days, and Zolotayev apologized and said that he needed something shorter for family reasons. He later learned that Zyatlov's group were doing a shorter trek for 15 days, and even though it was against the rules to allow unlisted hikers to join another's group, Zyatlov accepted him in. Most people in the group were confused and yet surprised by the sudden stranger being accepted in. None of them knew him, but according to Zagrin, he would say Zolotayev was a very open, outgoing, and polite, and had great communication skills. There was one person in the group that really questioned him and felt unsure about him. Dubinina. She felt because Zolotayev was older than Ziatlov, he would try to take charge of the group over him and cause trouble. But Ziatlov and Zolotayev got along well, and soon her nervousness subsided and everyone eventually seemed to bond and accept him the longer he talked and sang as they traveled. And having someone with experienced military skills could prove to be useful. Zolotayev was the oldest in the group. A fifth-year student at the UPR University, as a radio engineering major, Komogorova was an experienced hiker. On one of her hiking trips, she was bitten by a viper. However, even though she was in a lot of pain, she refused to lighten her load as she didn't want to cause hardship to her group. Everyone who knew her said that she was very smart, always full of ideas, and was liked by a lot of people. She was very respectful to people and treated everyone with kindness. Komogorova had already gone to six expeditions and she was always going to the treks, which were led by Dziatlov. Komogorova and Dziatlov were very close friends, as they had a lot in common, especially since they both studied radio engineering at the UPI. Nikolai graduated in 1958 with a major in civil engineering from UPI University, and was working in the construction department of Spirdlosk but the name of the department is unknown. Nikolai had different varieties of difficulties in hiking trips and was a very experienced hiker. He was very popular among the other UPI students and also the members of the sports club. They all said that he was very energetic, friendly, and also humorous. There was a spread misconception that Nikolai was born in a camp. However, his second cousin, Marina Kozantseva, interview that it wasn't true, and that Nikolai's father was the only one that was sent to a camp, leaving his family to live in Spirdlosk and then in Ossiniki. The leader of the group that led the expedition to the mountains near Kolot, and the very same name that the incident was named after, was Igor Dyatlov. Dyatlov was a very talented engineer as he designed and assembled his own radio during his hikes in 1956, and then designed his own small stove in 1958 that he had brought with him on this trip. Dyatlov was well known for being thorough in carrying out any task. He was in great physical shape and had a very friendly personality towards other people. Even when it came to members of his group that did not obey his orders, he would punish them kindly and with patience. He never scolded or shamed his groups. Dyatlov was brave and confident with every hike he had ever done. He had a sense of responsibility, and that is one of the biggest qualities of being a good leader. Dyatlov had trust and respect from his group. He truly was a talented leader. Yudin was an economics and engineering student and suffered health problems later on during this trip in the Dziatlov group. We will get back to Yudin in the next video as his part of the story will be told from there. Now that you have a feel of who these students were, part two will be about their journey. So thank you for watching part one of the Dziatlov Pass incident story. I will be uploading part two soon. Like and subscribe and thank you!